So we're here today to talk about the topics of scale and scalability, uh, specifically for asset performance management platforms in the context of renewable energy uh, for asset owners and service providers, and those with rapidly growing portfolios. And I thought I'd talk to you both specifically since as our chief product and technology officers, you have unique perspectives and how we leverage technology and innovation specifically to address these challenges. Uh, so why don't we start with a brief intro, um, starting with you, Abhilash. Thanks, Robert. Uh, it's such a pleasure to be here today talking to both of you. Um, so obviously I'm Abhilash Krishnan. Um, I hold the role of Chief Product Officer at Power Factor. Um, and in that capacity, what that means is my team and I are responsible for uh, developing the product strategy um, and our product roadmaps. Um, we basically decide what to build and why uh, it matters to build it. Um, and in those roles, uh, we work closely with you know, Russ and Russ's team in technology uh, to actually succeed in delivering value to our, our customers. And as far as background is concerned, um, I started my career working in forensic data analysis um, and data analytics, primarily on the wind sector. Um, and then over the last five years, I've worked at Power Factors, uh, primarily in product management uh, for wind, solar, and battery storage. So it's been a great learning experience. Um, and I'm, I'm really excited to talk to you today. And, and Russ? Well, hi, everybody. I'm Russ Butler. I'm the CTO of Power Factors, and I'm responsible for all of our product development and advanced analytics and cloud engineering uh, across the company. Um, I've only been at Power Factors about a year and a half, but I've spent the last 25 years in the enterprise software and SaaS markets, including some time at both uh, Oracle and IBM. Uh, I've long been involved in enterprise data management um, at scale types of solutions, and including some number of years where I led R&D for IBM's data integration uh, product lines. Awesome. Yeah, it's been great adding you to the team. Uh, a little bit about myself. Uh, I've uh, Robert Johnson. I've been at Power Factors for about seven years and have worn many hats. Um, currently, I am solutions architect, which means I help our customers understand our products and services, and then how to integrate those into their ecosystems. Um, and I have about 15 years of experience in renewables, uh, primarily solar, um, focused on SCADA systems, controls, and grid integration, uh, and now uh, quite a bit on cloud technologies. So if I may, I'd like to set the stage for the discussion. Um, and I would argue, you know, there hasn't been a better time to be in energy than today especially with renewables, which you know we've seen mature over the years and gain widespread acceptance. And now as governments increasingly adopt decarbonization policies, like with the IRA most recently in the US, we're, see, we're seeing explosive growth. But on the flip side, we're seeing customers really struggle to keep pace with the rapid change. You know, Not only are portfolios growing in size, but they're also growing in complexity, especially as you add storage to the mix. And what we've seen is customers that have cobbled together patchwork solutions organically over the years, those solutions begin to falter as they scale up. And so that lack of integration leads to data silos, handoff between teams and vendors becomes really painful and untenable. And you, know, you inevitably see costs and the burden of maintenance start to balloon. So you know, against that backdrop, Abhilash, I'd like to ask you, you know, what is your perspective on how our products can address those, those challenges? Yeah, Robert, I think you, you laid the foundation really correctly. Um, you know, over the last uh, three or four years, uh, we've been seeing a lot change in the industry. Um, and really, you know, in any industry, there, there's, there comes this tipping point um, as the industry balloons. Uh, in this case, we're talking, obviously, renewable energy generation. Um, where there's enough critical mass that's happening that this tipping point occurs and you start to realize that actually um, as an owner or operator of these renewable energy assets, uh, just what got you here is not going to get you there. So you're not going to be able to stay cost effective or lean and meet your growth targets and still be successful. Your tools, your technology, your teams, just they're not going to be able to handle the 3x, 5x type goals that you have against uh, that, that are coming at you. And you know, normally what happens at these points is some sort of massive paradigm shift and innovation needs to happen. Um, in this case, you know, we're talking about how technology and subject matter expertise can come together in the best possible way. Um, and a good parallel here that I like to use is actually the shift to cloud computing. So, you know, if you go back several years um, or maybe even a decade at this point, 
you're going to find that, you know, there were a lot of companies that had their own servers, that had their own racks across any industry, in fact. And a tipping point came when so many people needed to be online or have their databases available to them that essentially you, a, a new business was created that was infrastructure as a service. And you see all the typical cloud providers today doing this, right? With AWS, Azure, Google Cloud, and so on. Something similar is happening in the renewables industry right now. And you know, on a daily basis, I see a lot of the owners and operators that are our customers, uh, but also outside our customer base, and if you ask them what's really keeping you up at night, what they're going to say is tomorrow I'm going to be five gigawatts or 10 gigawatts in the next couple of years, but I'm not an IT shop. Um, and I can't afford to have an internal army of developers to take this battle on. Um, I really need something that's going to help me stay lean, stay cost effective, but actually optimize the value of my assets at these scales. And I don't really have an option uh, but to succeed. So what I generally hear customers telling me is that they want to trust the data that they're, that they're using um, and have it available when they want it, where they want it, how they want it. Um, and then they also wanna be able to adapt rapidly to changing uh, business, business processes or contracts, uh, changing IT strategies and so on. And this is really mission critical. It's getting to the point where it's a, it's a question of survival for these companies. Um, obviously what makes it challenging is they wanna stay lean and cost-effective through the whole process. So. You know, it's not an easy problem, but it's a hotbed for innovation um, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, those are the sorts of conversations I'm having with customers every day. So uh, that really resonates. Um, and, and Russ, you actually have the good fortune of having an army of developers <laughs> at your call. Um, maybe you can describe to us how you're leveraging those teams to deliver solutions here. Sure. Well, you know, a couple of years back, we saw obviously this growth that Abolash was just talking about and these new demands and, you know, the idea is that you're going to need something different to be able to deal with this. So we put a strategy in motion and we've been investing heavily uh, since, you know, that time period. We made uh, a couple of key strategic acquisitions uh, in the last couple of years. And um, now we have, a, a, as you mentioned, a team of over 100 developers and uh, organized into multiple product teams. And we've got a great set of technologies that we're drawing upon to kind of prepare for this next uh, wave of growth. And um, so we've been weaving the best of these APM technologies and, and platforms together into a next gen solution that, that can stand up to these challenges. And things that it's been going great. We've been doing a lot of heavy lifting for for the last uh, 12 to 18 months. Um, and you know it's, it's coming along really well. So a little bit of insight into the platform. So overall, it's an event-driven microservices architecture. So uh, at the center of it is a distributed event streaming platform that can handle extremely high levels of volume and scalability with super low latency. So high volume, really fast, event-driven system at the core. So think of that sort of as a central nervous system for, for this platform. Everything runs through that, that framework. Um, out, on, out in front, we've got data ingestion, right? At, at the edge, that's a major part of what we've been doing. We've, been, um, we've got a data ingestion system that can stream um, massive amounts of data from a really wide set of sources. And we've been in this business for many years now, and we've seen just about every type of, of ingestion source that there is. And so we've got a nice library of adapters and ingestion methods to draw upon, and we're feeding them into this system um, you know, quite well, and it scales, it scales you know, super well. Um, and then you know, finally, as Abela suggested, everything's built on the cloud. Um, and that gives us a few big advantages. Obviously, you know, we can scale very, very quickly uh, to adapt to new, to new needs. We can spin up more capacity, low balance things, um, you know, really, really react on a dime. All of this is architected in a way that's very secure and reliable. Uh, we make major investments in um, security and compliance. And um, you know, it's very central to the whole architecture of our system. And you know, we get a lot of, of benefits from that scale. It's cost effective to do things at scale. And a lot of those, those savings we're able to pass along to our customers. Uh, we do a lot of the, the heavy maintenance and management of the system 
you know, things that, um, you know, most, most uh, uh, customers don't want to do and um, are, you know, are happy to hand off to us. Um, and then finally, we've got, you know, some new partnerships. You may have seen our announcements about our partnerships with Amazon. Um, we work closely with the AWS team and are able to leverage their experience and expertise in this, in this space as well. So, like I said, it's all going really well. We've begun transitioning customers over to the new platform. And, um, you know, this is a progressive thing. We'll keep adding capabilities as the months pass. But, uh, it's, you know, it's all really exciting. We're very excited about where we are.